Hey guys, welcome back. It is finally time to do some speed reviews and if you guys have been watching my channel lately, I have been posting a lot of testing new makeup videos, basically where I try a bunch of new stuff for the first time and let you guys know my thoughts. Now, I feel like usually I can tell how I like a product right away, but there is some things like foundations, primers especially that sometimes I can change my mind about. So I want to kind of update you guys officially on some products I have tried in the past month or so. So some pretty new things and let you know kind of my final thoughts on these. Just kind of an updated after I've tried these quite a bit because this has been like all I've been using the past six weeks. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's video is going to be Sephora themed. So I decided I would do this one more kind of higher end Sephora themed one and then I'm going to do a separate drugstore version kind of letting you know kind of the best and worst drugstore products so far for 2024 but I just have so much stuff I want to talk about so I thought I would make two videos. So let's start with primer. I really only tried one new one this year and this is from One Size. This is their Secure the Glow Tacky Hydrating Primer. I have to say this has really surprised me. I did not expect to love this as much as I do because I do have more oily skin. I tend to stick to more mattifying primers, but I will tell you my skin looks beautiful whenever I am wearing this. No matter what foundation I'm putting with it, it's just flattering on the skin. I feel like sometimes my more mattifying primers are great at keeping me oil-free, but sometimes like on my texture and if I do have like any dry spots on my face it really kind of emphasizes those and doesn't always lay the best. This looks so good with literally everything, every foundation. So I have been so impressed with this one. This is kind of a tacky primer but it's not as tacky as like the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip or the e.l.f. Power Grip. This does not have as much stickiness as those. It just has this nice kind of lightweight gel feel it just makes the skin look hydrated and really creates the most perfect base for makeup application. So I feel like this is great, especially for combo skin, dry skin, even oily skin. Don't be scared of this one. But yeah, as it dries down, it's really, it's not that sticky. So if you're expecting more of that gripping kind of primer, this is not really that. But Overall, this makes my foundation look great, my skin looks great with this, and I do feel like it still keeps my makeup on for a long amount of time. I absolutely love this one. Highly recommend checking this primer out. It's so fun. It has little boba beads in there too, and it's it's definitely not overly glowy, just the perfect amount. Next we have for foundation. I just have one in this category as well, but I have been trying the Prada Beauty Prada Reveal Skin skin optimizing foundation. I have been trying some more drugstore foundations, so that's why I don't have a lot in this category right now, but I was really in love with this one the first time I tried it, which again was such a surprise. I really was not expecting much from this brand because this Prada Beauty is like a brand new line. Of course, we're familiar with the Prada luxury brand. They have tons of accessories, fashion, and they do make perfumes, but this was their first kind of dive into makeup products. A lot of times I'm just always left feeling, is it really worth that price? Because I mean, some of these brands are really expensive and this foundation it's pricey, but let me tell you, I really enjoyed this foundation, especially paired with the one size primer. Oh my gosh, my skin was looking its best. Like I have never received so many compliments when I had that com combination on. Um, I've definitely tried it with some of my other primers as well, but wow, it really looks so good with that one size primer. And I really liked this. I do, I hate that I love it because it is so expensive, but I'm telling you, it makes the skin look flawless. It looks so beautiful. It's a nice medium coverage. It's not too heavy. It just blurs everything. Like I've been struggling with a lot of like really tiny breakouts on my forehead. Had some bad texture there. This just kind of blurred it all out. Lays so well on the skin and it lasts on the skin without getting too greasy. I just like how lightweight this is. It also has SPF in the formula. So I was I was impressed, I will say. Even though it is so expensive, I've been reaching for this so much. Like you can check my previous videos, how many times 
guys, I've been wearing this foundation. I always have my makeup linked usually what I have on the face and yeah, I cannot put this down. It's been kind of my go-to for when I know I need my makeup to be looking really good. This has been my go-to. So I really, I kind of do want to buy another shade, like a deeper shade for more of my self-tan days because I love it that much. And if this is out of your budget, I'm sure there is tons of other foundations that are probably just as good at an affordable price point too, but I love trying just like new things, seeing what luxury brands actually make some really good products, and Prada is really impressing me. I have, I have my eye on maybe trying out one of their eyeshadow palettes too, we'll see. I don't know if I'll buy the lipstick from their line because I think that's like almost $50 for a lipstick, and I've been trying so many lip products lately, but the foundation really is a winner, and if you've been curious if this is in your budget and you want to try it out honestly I do recommend it and like I said my skin is more oily combo right now and this just looks so flattering okay I do have two concealers to talk about here I feel like concealers I really have to test for a decent amount of time I know I have more that I could share but I just haven't really gotten my thoughts on them yet but I will say this one was kind of disappointing this is from YSL it's their all hours precise angles concealer so another kind of more luxury brand this one to me it was a little too lightweight and I honestly feel like there's a drugstore dupe for this. I personally think that the L'Oreal Nude True Match Concealer is pretty much the same thing as this. I think they're owned by the same company as well. I think L'Oreal owns YSL. I could be wrong. They pretty much perform the same to me. Of course I'm gonna go for the more drugstore option but I will say this is a pretty light coverage and typically I like a little more medium to full coverage but I do like that this is a thinner consistency but I just find that I can't really build this up to the coverage that I want. It's just too natural on this skin. I just didn't think it was flattering. I mean I just have some dark circles sometimes that I really need to cover up so if you're looking for or just more of something lightweight to put on that's maybe not going to get cakey or mess with wrinkles as much. This might be a really good option, but if your thing is like covering up darkness, puffiness, I think you're going to want something with a little bit more coverage. So overall, this just wasn't really my type of concealer, but one I have been loving that actually has the same kind of thin consistency is this Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Concealer. This one um, is kind of in the same lines as their Flawless Foundation foundation that actually went viral again. Their foundation came out last year, but it's been having its moment right now, and it's a beautiful foundation. Like, what really makes it special is how lightweight it is, but the coverage that you get, and that is exactly what you get with this concealer, too. So I feel like if you like the foundation, I think you're going to like this as well, but it just has this really nice lightweight formula that still covers, gives me the medium to fuller coverage that I love. And this actually lasts all day on the face without breaking up. I feel like so many of my concealers fade throughout the day. That's like a huge thing for me. I need my concealer to last. So that's why I don't always like the thinner formulas, but this really holds up throughout the day. It really impressed me. So I think this is worth checking out for sure. Okay, I do have one powder that I tried out and this is from Huda Beauty. This is their Easy Bake and Snatch, which is basically a pressed powder version of their Easy Bake Powder. I absolutely love the loose powder version and I typically prefer loose powders in general. I really don't buy a lot of pressed powders, so this one was actually sent to me in PR. Um, otherwise, I probably would not have bought this on my own, but I was pretty disappointed trying this out. I will say the first time I tried it, I wanted to use this for baking underneath the eyes because this has a nice brightening effect. This is in the shade Cupcake, which has a very slight hint of pink to really brighten the under eyes. And it definitely brightened, but it did not hold up on the skin. It actually looked really dry. My under eyes looked very dark like midway through the day. So I was pretty disappointed in how this performed on the skin. Um, I did not use it as an all over setting powder. I don't think I will just because I prefer the uh, loose version. The loose version works just fine underneath the eyes as well. It doesn't really look dry on me. It actually is a lot more like smoothing, blurring. I love it so much. So this pressed version really did not seem to be all that to me, which was, you know, kind of sad because I would have liked to like carry this with me in my purse and stuff to touch, to touch up throughout the day, but I really just prefer the loose version. I have a couple blush products 
products. Let's talk about this little Natasha Denona mini blush I got. It's called the My Mini Dream Glow Blush, which I uh, bought with the My Mini Dream palette. I have the palette on right now, and I'm not including eyeshadows in today's video. I'm going to do a separate palette ranking either in the next couple of weeks so I can kind of share with you my top favorites that have released because I have like probably almost 30, 20 to 30 palettes to rank, but this little guy I was kind of excited for. I usually like Natasha's blushes and this one was just kind of disappointing. I think it's, I think it's in the okay category. I'm not like mad at it, but it's not a top favorite for me. I feel like it's so hard because I don't try that many products that are absolute fails for me but there is a lot of just mediocre stuff and um when it comes to my collection I only want like the best of the best in my collection I want like my favorite things so this might be something I end up decluttering here down the road but it does come with a couple different blush tones in here and then a little highlight but I just thought that this really did not show up that well. It's pretty light in pigment. I was expecting a little bit more. It's also really, really small. Um, maybe that's part of the issue where I just can't pick that much product up on my brush, but I just didn't like it. I, I do like a little bit more pigment when it comes to my blushes, and I am pretty fair myself, so I'm really surprised that this actually took a lot of effort to show up. So I just really was not that impressed with this. Now something that I do really like for blush are actually these little Milk Makeup Tints. I know that these are very hit or miss for people, and they're kind of going viral because they look like Jello. <laughs> so basically, they are these little jelly sticks. They literally wiggle like jello does and it feels like jello very staining because they are like a stain so they do stain the hands pretty bad so let me quickly wipe this off um but i mean it's nice for the cheeks because they do kind of stay on longer throughout the day now i know some people have issues applying these i personally have never had a problem i have always just went ahead and dipped my brush on the actual product and applied it from there and it seems to blend out just fine that way. I probably would not recommend dotting it on the face but I don't like to do that with any of my liquid products. They just that just never turns out when I when I put it directly on the face. I just feel like a brush you're going to get the best blend with. Now when I did first use these, these come with like a little bit of liquid ex excess liquid kind of surrounding the blush. So I feel like it comes off a little strong at first but now they are a little more tinted you don't have to go too crazy with it but it still gives really great pigmentation I think on the cheeks but I have really enjoyed these I have one on right now I actually have on this like coral one which is so pretty so yeah I've been wearing these a lot I like them the one thing I'm kind of wondering about these is if they're gonna dry out really fast though I mean I'm definitely keeping those little plastic caps on them to keep them moist but I could see these drying out kind of quickly, so the only time will tell with that. That's going to take definitely many more months of testing to see how these perform months down the road, if they're going to dry out too much, if they're going to shear out even more, but right now, I really like them. I think they're fun and innovative, and I really haven't had no issues blending them at all. I did also want to throw in here, this product was already returned to Sephora because I was very disappointed, and it was really expensive, so um, since you have like 30 days to return stuff to Sephora now, it's so hard for me to get those back in time because I'm trying to like review stuff, so I already sent that back. I was really disappointed. Um, it came with like two highlights technically, a bronzer and like this blush topper, but I really hated the blush topper. It looks so pretty, like a rose gold pink in the pan, but on the cheeks, it just looks like a highlight. I barely got any of the pinky hues from that blush. So all around, it's basically just a big highlight palette and like one bronzer that's actually very patchy and light on the skin. So was not impressed with that formula. Usually I like Charlotte Tilbury's cheek palettes. Like I bought hers last year that had two blushes, two highlights. I think it was part of the Pillow Talk collection. Unfortunately, that one, you can't even get anymore but this year's palette yeah I really did not care for that immediately went back to the store like one of the worst products I've tried this year so for mascara I haven't tried many high-end ones but I have one here this is Too Faced this is their naturally better than sex mascara I will say I was 
pretty impressed with this one when I tried it out for the first time and I think I was really impressed because it did not transfer and I really do not like the better than sex mascara because it transfers and it flakes so much and this one I did not have that problem with at all so I think I just I really did get excited about that but overall, um, once I've kind of tested a couple more drugstore mascaras this year that impressed me even more than this did, I don't think this is like a run out and buy it type of product. I think it's nice, but it's not like top tier. And maybe it's just like my preferences. I think if you guys do like a more natural lash, I have this one on right now. It's just not giving as much thickness and length as I typically go for. But some people do like more of a natural lash, and I think that's kind of what you you get with this. It's not as clumpy crazy as the Better Than Sex. It does not smear or smudge um, and it has more natural ingredients in the formula. So for Too Faced I think this is good but it's definitely not like my top tier but if you are looking for more of that natural kind of buildable just everyday mascara then you may actually really like this one. Okay I finally got my hands on the Rare Beauty brow gel this year and I have to say I love it. I think the only downside for people is that you don't get a ton of product in here. It's not super expensive though, but I do wish it did come with a little bit more product. Me personally, I don't really go through it that fast. I do rotate through a few brow gels though, and I find brow gels to last me quite a long time. You just really don't need a ton of product, but I mean, yeah, it's a small size. You only get 0.15 ounces of product in here, but it's a really great brow gel. Maybe she'll make like a super sized version of this one. I think that would be fun. But yeah, it really holds the brows in place all day. It's a nice thinner formula where it's not going to crunch up like some brow gels do. doesn't have like weird crunchy fallout um, throughout the day as well. So it's, it's seriously like my favorite brow gel right now. It is so good. I highly recommend getting it. You can finally grab this at Sephora now. I mean, hopefully this is still in stock. I know it was out of stock for a very long time, but I think it is still in stock. So my last category which is my biggest category and that is lips um, lip products have been trending oh my goodness so I have a lot that I have tried and most of them I have liked so I have to be I have to be really picky here but let me start uh, with lip oils. So I did receive the full line of the Too Faced like jelly kissing lip oils and I do think these are cute. What I like about them is that they have different scents and the scents are so good on these. I wear this bubblegum one a lot. Like I've already gone through probably half of this container. This one goes in my bag and I, I think the bubblegum is definitely the prettiest. You get the most color payoff off of this one and it smells just like bubblegum. Um, I love the formula. It's so nice. I just kind of wish that the colors varied more in this line because a lot of them look the same on the lips. There's not a lot of different tints with these. Like even though there's like a blue, this one does not go on blue. It's more clear. This is their cotton candy, but it smells damn good. Like it really does smell exactly like a blue cotton candy. But like I said, the formula is great on these. It's a nice slippery, like true lip oil formula in my opinion. It's not super thick and it's not sticky at all. But yeah, they just need better tints and I would like them to keep this formula but make more colors, like more pigmented colors. I think that could be a really good idea for them because they really nail the scent on these and like the texture is so nice. But if you're gonna buy one, just buy one. <laughs> like you do not need more than one color, but I do really like these a lot. So I wanted to mention. Now I also tried the Summer Fridays lip oils and this was a really kind of hyped up launch. And I will say with these, I think because it's Summer Fridays, I was a little bit let down. I think I was expecting more. This also is, it's a very true lip oil formula. I think I like the consistency of the Too Faced ones a little bit more. They're just a little bit thicker. These are very thin, very slippery, but the tints, um, they do show up a little bit more than the Too Faced ones. But I think just because I love the Summer Fridays actual lip balms, that's just what I prefer over these oils. Um, sometimes I do like a thicker lip oil, but if you want like that true, just thin lip oil formula, you may like these, but I don't know. I'm not really like in love as I thought I would be. Speaking of Summer Fridays, thought I would throw this in here real quick. I mean, this was just kind of a given. I know it's like new and I haven't really 
talked about it much, but this is the new Summer Fridays birthday cake butter balm. Um, Summer Fridays makes my favorite lip balms. And I had to pick up the birthday cake one because it's advertised as like a shimmery one. So it has this iridescence on the tube. Um, I will say this, I'm a little disappointed. I am a little disappointed because I wanted a little more shimmer. It's very light. I have it on right now. I feel like this is just like really similar to the pink sugar one. So um, the scent is about the same as the vanilla. It's it's not really a different scent in my opinion. So I was just expecting more from it, but I was excited to purchase it because I mean, it's called birthday cake. It's my birthday month, February. Um, the 28th is when my actual birthday is. This really got like a lot of hype for what it is and I just think I'm like it's fine but like if you have a lot of Summer Fridays lip balms I don't think it's a spectacular different color so kind of a little bit of a letdown in my opinion but if you don't have any of these yet it's fun I love these lip balms from them oh my gosh so many lip balms let's talk about this one next this is from K Skin I've heard so many good things about this one and they came out with some different lip balm tints so I picked up the nude ting one Oh my gosh, you guys, I love this. So I do like a thicker balm, and this one's thick, let me tell you. I'm, I'm losing my light a little bit. The sun is starting to set outside, so I'm going to try and hurry with the rest of these. But I really like a thicker lip balm just because I feel like they give thickness to the lips as well. The lips just look juicier, and I feel like the color lasts longer on the lips, the thicker the balm. And yeah, I really like this, but I did see some reviews of this product getting clogged a lot in the tube. I personally have not had that issue whatsoever. So I don't know. I bought one of their new newer launched colors. So maybe they did improve that, but I have not had anything weird happen with mine. I've been enjoying it. I've had it in my bag. I like the tint that this gives. Seriously, I do think it might be like my top favorite lip balm right now, like better than Summer Fridays. It's just a little thicker than theirs and I really like that. I also tried the Tower 28 lip balms. I feel like these, they're nice. They are, these are really pigmented. Like if you like a lot of color with your lip balms, I think you will love these. These are called the Lip Softies. They're supposed to be very moisturizing and I have all the shades and each one does smell like the name. So like the Dolce de Leche smells like coffee. Coffee. And then we have the blood orange vanilla, which is more of a citrus. So I thought that was like a nice touch. These are thinner in consistency, and I will say I have to be picky with these because there's so many lip balms. I don't love the applicator as much. It's a little bit messy. Like the Summer Fridays and the K-Skin have more of a slanted lip balm, so it fits your lips a little bit better, and you're not getting product all over the place. And since these are pigmented, it's kind of hard. Like I feel like I have to apply it and then blend it in with my finger so it's a it's a nice formula but like yeah there's so many out there that I really have to be nitpicky about like my thoughts on these and I think these are good like they're a cheaper option too they're $16 compared to like $20 that some can be. But yeah, I think the definite difference with these is that they are quite pigmented. You get a lot more color out of these than let's say like the Summer Fridays. So it just kind of depends on what your preferences are with all these lip balms on the market. So these, I, they're nice, but they're not like my top tier. Okay, this was kind of a disappointment, mostly for the scent. I've tried Laneige before. I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well. And I was so excited for them to launch this cotton candy lip sleeping mask. But it doesn't even smell like cotton candy. That was so disappointing. This is, the inside is really cute though. It has like pink and blue swirls, but... This smells like blue raspberry. It's very kind of sour almost. The Too Faced cotton candy, this smells like true cotton candy to a T. But yeah, I was kind of disappointed in that. It performs like exactly like their other lip masks do, but like I already have the berry and this goes on pretty clear. So I really did not need this one in my collection. So again, just being picky here with the scent, like that's kind of the main reason I bought this. And that like is a big contributing factor in some of my favorite lip balms is like it has to smell good so yeah I'm sad about this one I'm gonna have to see if I can still if I'm in 
like the return date for this one because I don't really reach for this at all and I would like to bring it back because I was pretty disappointed. It didn't really smell like a true cotton candy that I was wanting. Now we're getting into more kind of lipstick area, not the lip balms anymore. This is from Tarte. It's their Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump, but it's the shimmer one. So I picked out the rosy copper shimmer color and I was so excited because the sneak peeks for these looked so beautiful but they were kind of being tricksters where they had shown these on the lips in like very low lighting that you normally would not like see someone in so they looked really really pretty and sparkly but like when you get them in person it looks more like metallic and yes it's pretty but I kind of wanted more shimmer and shine to them. I'm not usually a fan of metallic lips, but the glitter just not does not stand out enough for me in daylight and like even in this lighting here. Like you have to have very low lighting for these to look very glittery. I mean, they look really glittery in the tube too, but yeah. I don't know. I was kind of let down. I don't really prefer much like metallic shades on my lips. Um I love a shiny gloss, but I don't like that metallic foiled look on the lips. So I don't know. I was just kind of sad about these. I wanted more sparkle. I love, love, love the originals though, but now everyone is duping them, so I don't know if I'm going to be repurchasing much of these anymore. We'll have to see, but yeah, I did want to let you guys know my thoughts on that because I think it's fine, but not what I was expecting. I am very impressed though with these Makeup by Mario lipsticks. Okay, I feel like Makeup by Mario really knows how to do a good nude color. Like, his range of colors is so good good and I literally found my favorite lipstick of all time. I've been wearing Midtown like crazy. I did like a whole shorts on this if you want to check it out on the lips but it is the perfect neutral nude that's not too pink. It's not too warm. It is beautiful on the lips and you guys agree. A lot of you guys actually purchased this one too. I hope you're loving it if you bought it because it is so pretty. It's seriously my favorite nude of all time right now and then I also picked up South Shore from them which is just a little bit warmer but still such a beautiful color. So really, really love the formula of these. They have a really nice satin finish on the lips. They last a good amount of time and they just feel really good and the colors are just too, too good. I really love his undertones. Okay, last but not least are these Hourglass lip liners and these were a real hit for me as well. I was kind of skeptical because these are expensive but a lot of Hourglass products really work well for me. I really do like a lot of their stuff and if I'm spending a lot on a lip liner, I need this to last and it does last. Like this is one of the longest lasting lip liners and that is something I struggle with. I feel like some formulas are like really creamy at first but then they fade away with your lip gloss. Like there's nothing left behind. These will stay behind. Even if my lip stick fades off, these are still on. In my wear test with this, I literally had Mexican food, had chips, uh, salsa, cheese dip, a quesadilla, and my lip liner was still on at the end of the day which is crazy. Usually after eating, I feel like it's all gone. No, this this is worth it and I can see why it is more pricey because it actually stays on the lips. So I really like these. It has some great colors. I have a couple shades in it and I highly recommend them. So that is everything I wanted to talk about today. I know we're kind of losing the daylight here, but thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. I know we did have quite a few hits, but we also had some stuff that I thought was just okay or just not really worth it to me. So I feel like, you know, these are kind of nice that I can just kind of update you guys quickly with my round of reviews of the products I have tried lately. So these are like all mostly all new 2024 products. I'll have everything linked down below as well as in the YouTube shopping section here and I will be uploading my drugstore version very soon. Let me know if you guys like these round of reviews and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!